What's up guys, hope you're doing well. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That really helps me out. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you a little project that I got going on. Um, I got this mower, uh, it's a um, friend of mine's um, mother's mower, and I received it. Um, someone had already tried to look into what the issue was. All I know is that the um, it was losing power and backfiring. Now, when I got it, it had both the valve covers off of it. It had actually this um, uh, rocker, I'm sorry, lifter. Um, the lifter was out of it and taken apart. So I put that back together and soaked that in some oil. And I basically wanted to just put everything back together and see if I could duplicate the issue um, because a lot of things get uh, messed up in translation between people and all this. And so I was kind of about three or four degrees bef between what's actually going on. Never heard of the mower move. And mechanics always don't like to uh, go in behind someone else that has, you know, attempted to fix things. I don't know what's been done, hasn't been done. Uh, but just from, uh, like I said, what I knew, it lost power and was backfiring. I could tell that the carburetor looks like it's been recently replaced. And I'm going to show you guys some video um, once I got this back together and cranked it up, uh, what it was doing. Now, uh, a couple things before I show you the footage. Uh, I determined that it did have the wrong spark plugs in it. And I took this uh, carburetor, because um, basically when I was running it, after I ran it, after this video I'm going to show you, there was two gaskets. So when they put the carburetor on there, they basically had double stacked some gaskets. Um, but one way real quick, just to show you guys, if you're ever working on like a mower uh, engine, you can, there's usually um, a white tag right here. So like you can look up and find all the specs, torque specs, valve clearances and all that. Um, there's a, there'll be, you know, like, so go to Kohler and type in CV or just type in Kohler CV 25 S or whatever model number, uh, your mower is maybe a, you know, I can't remember the numbers, uh, letters B, uh, FV 730, something like that. And you will find, uh, usually I think it's Kohler Direct or something like that. It, it'll have a PDF and you can just download all that information. It'll give you all the information, torque specs and all that stuff for pretty much everything. Um, but let me show you that footage and I'm going to show you how I determined what is going on with this mower. All right, so I got it cranked up, and when I took that carburetor off, I accidentally broke the fuel pump, so that's why I was running the line right there, but I noticed once I got it running, that gas is coming up, shooting up at a very uh, rapid pace or a high velocity, so that made me think that the um, intake valve wasn't fully shutting, and I was having to run it off my battery here. It had a dead battery, but I'm going to show you guys the amount of gas. And I was starting to get kind of concerned that it might backfire and shoot flames up here in a moment. So I cut it off pretty quick. But what I decided to do is do a, a leak down test. Now, when you're doing a leak down test, you want to get that, um, you're, preferably you want to get it warm. And just for the record, don't ever, I'm not an expert at anything. I want that to be on the record. I'm not an expert at anything. Don't do anything how I tell you to do it. I'm just telling you how I do it. Okay. So just for the disclaimer there, um, you ever watch that movie casino where, uh, Robert De Niro, I think it's ACE is the character and he says there's the right way, the wrong way, then there's my way. Okay. I'm just showing you guys my way. So, um, when you're doing a leak down test, you prefer, Preferably you want it to be warm, but oftentimes I'll do it cold. And in this situation, you know, it's just not feasible for me to warm it up and then do the leak down with it running so bad. So um, normally you want that piston that you're doing the leak down test on to be at top dead center. And you want it to be right on top dead center because if you don't, uh, the air, when you apply the air, because the piston's at the very top, so it can be pushed down. And the reason you're doing that is so both of the intake and the exhaust valves are, are closed. And you're trying to see, is it leaking through the rings? Is it leaking through a valve? Is it leaking through a head gasket? What's it leaking through? And, uh, but if you don't have the, uh, like I don't have the rocker arms or push rods installed right now, so my valves are 100% closed. So I don't have to worry about do, going to top dead center. 
So I'm going to show you guys uh, what I believe is wrong with this motor. Here's my uh, uh, leak down cylinder leakage tester uh, OTC. I think this was about $120. Um, you can get them online uh, cheaper than buying it through the store. So it's got the instructions here. You know, you want to allow the engine to run until it's sufficiently warm, but you don't have to, but you're going to get more accurate results if you do that. Remove all spark plugs, air cleaner, radiator cap, crankcase filler, and rotate the uh, crankshaft until a piston in the cylinder under, under test is at top dead center on, on the compression stroke. So both valves close. So I don't have to do that because both of my valves are closed. Install the proper uh, adapter end. Um, screw it into where the spark into the spark plug hole, and then you're going to connect the um, connect test hose to the t uh, leakage tester. So I'll screw this in to the head, and then attach this to the tester. And then I'm going to turn this all the way back, and um, then I'm going to hook up. You're going to have to have compressed air. You got to have compressed air to do this. And so then once we we're going to crank it on up to 100 and then if it's leaking you'll feel air coming out one way or the other if it's leaking through um, the carburetor or the intake you've got a intake valve leaking if it's leaking through the exhaust you've got a exhaust valve that's leaking through if you have air coming out of the uh, crankcase it's you know probably your ring um, piston rings that are worn out. And then if it's a water cooled uh, engine and you have um, the radiator cap off and you see air bubbles, it's probably a head gasket that is um, leaking by there. So there's kind of all the stuff. And as you'll see, it says, give some information, you know, of allowable uh, PSI. And I'm gonna show you real quick what I did on this cylinder. All right guys, so I got my hose hooked into the spark plug hole there. And um, you just have to get it hand tight and then I got it hooked up and I got my air on. And so I'm gonna crank it up and show you guys um, what I found. Let's see, I got a... So this is the, the tank pressure and this is the pressure that's um, the cylinder is, is maintaining. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but we already have quite a bit of, of leak coming through. So I'm going to take it up to 100. And so now our cylinder has 10% leakage and it's coming through the carburetor here so these valves are, are closed so I shouldn't be getting that much air coming back up so when the engine was running what's going on is my intake valve isn't seating isn't sealing off as it's coming up it's not sealing against the head correctly so basically what I'm going to need to do is take that head off and I could possibly lap the valves and get it to seat, but I went ahead and got new valves ordered, new valve seals, and everything. And also one other problem I'm gonna that this motor has, we got a severe oil leak. So what I'm gonna do just to make everything easier, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this entire engine and set it up on my workbench. And that's gonna make it easier to remove that head, and then also uh, allow me to replace the um, uh, lower crank seal. But I just uh, this is just a good way. I kind of wish I had done this test before I'd even taken it apart, uh, or I'm sorry, put it back together and started it up. Started it up. Um, I did the same test on the other side, and I was getting very like almost like two percent leakage through the crank, which is acceptable. Um, but that velocity—that's what was causing that gas to shoot up. That's my prediction. Um, so hopefully, after I get the new valves installed. And everything put back together um, hopefully it'll run good so I'm about to remove the engine and first thing I do when I go to start to remove an engine from the unit is uh, disconnect the battery and I disconnect the um, the ground and then also 
like just like what I'm doing now, if it's something I'm not really familiar with, I like to take video or photo of everything just to kind of help in case you get um, a little confused of how to put stuff back together or to remind you. Um, next thing, after I do the uh, battery, I'm going to disconnect the cables running to the starter, the choke cable, the um, uh, throttle cable, then the fuel line. And then I'm going to get underneath here and uh, remove the clutch and the drive pulley. And if you saw the last video, I was talking about how someone had already kind of worked on this thing. And I just discovered this, which I'm surprised it was running as good as it was with that not even being bolted on there. And I'm just now seeing also that the drive belt is completely missing. So I'll have to call the guy and say, hey, we need to find a drive belt. So I got the engine removed and this is a good opportunity to clean up all that engine bay area. Put it up on my table and as I took the shroud off, I'm seeing stuff that wasn't put back together right. I don't know if it's ever been running like this. I'm just seeing ground connections not hooked up properly. A bolt right here that's loose on the intake. I mean really loose. So that's probably not, that was probably creating a vacuum leak there. Um, just a lot of mess. You know, these older mowers and people have messed with it. You'll find all kinds of things. But here's the old valves. I got the new valves put in. Um, new head gasket. All right, guys. So it's a couple days later. I got the um, I got the engine um, taken out. I re actually ended up replacing the lower crank seal. It was leaking, and uh, replaced the exhaust valve and the um, intake valve on that on that head. And even though the exhaust valve wasn't leaking by, I just went ahead and did that. So I put some grinding compound on there, lapped the valves in, and made sure they were sealing up good. Um, one way I do that real quick is just, you know, after, after you lap them, you can spray some carb cleaner and turn the head upside down and just kind of look and see if any um, carb cleaner is leaking past the valves. So that, that, once you know it's not doing that, you know, I just put it all back together and um, I, I cranked it up. It had a dead battery on there and I thought I was getting an overcharge issue. Um, so I've cleaned like all the ground connections and everything. I put a new battery in there cleaned all the connections really good and it's running pretty good um, for this old of a motor and this thing has quite a let's see it's got 700 hours on it but it's pretty old um, so I'm gonna choke it having some type of fuel issue uh, it might not be getting fuel or something I don't know what's going on but it was running I had it running for about an hour the other day just to kind of bring it up to temperature but I got another um, fuel filter for it so now I'm gonna have to address why it just cut off there might need to do some adjusting on the carburetor but anyway, the valves uh, fixed that problem. So we saw the gas that was shooting out before, and now it's not happening. Um, not a fun job. I mean, it's it um, takes quite a bit of time, and you got to just be very careful. Uh, you know, put everything back together right. And sometimes, a lot of times, when you're messing with these older mowers like this, you'll get multiple issues. You'll find because I was just finding all kinds of things while I was in there. Um, Wires not connected right, not grounded right, um, soldered some wires, so they just had some wires just kind of twisted together. But I've made some videos on that stuff too, like uh, soldering um, wires, that, that comes in pretty handy. But this video is pretty much just mainly uh, using that leak down uh, tester to figure out the issue and diagnose it and get the problem solved. So, all right, real quick, I was like, this thing's running out of gas. Well. That's because it is out of gas. Now this tank was like, I probably burned half a tank just letting it run the other day, uh, just to make sure the head gasket. But let me see, you see all that? I don't know if you guys can see, I'm gonna put a rag down in here and clean that mess out. It looks like little bits of sand or something in there. But anyway, it was just funny that this thing runs out of gas right when I go to crank it up for you guys to show you how well it's running, then it, Oddly, just ran out of gas. I must have shut it off right before the thing ran out of gas. So, good. That, that was, that's good. I'm really happy. So, I'm going to put some gas in it and warm it up and change the oil. 
Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Like and subscribe the video. Thanks, guys.